will just ask Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Waalaikumsalam. How do you deal with people making fun of you, being mean to you in an Islamic way? Being mean to me? Yeah, or being mean to them? Yeah, to them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Same way I, they, I deal with them being mean to me. Ignore it. Don't worry. <laughs> Who cares? By the time you want to argue back, shaitan already got you, you open the door. So Allah is the best of those who defend. So one secret that in piety and in the schools of piety, the less you answer, the more Allah will punish them. If you take your hisab, then Allah would say, well, I was going to defend you but you took your hisab so that's good for you, do what you want. You didn't gain that nearness and the status that Allah wanted for you. So the highest is the one whom they, the first is the one who does with his hand what was done to him. The second is the one who wants money for what was done wrong to him. The third is the one who has tawakkul and turns to Allah So I don't want to harm with my hand, I don't want any compensation Ya Rabbi but I'm turning my affairs to you. And that is what they try to stay at that level in which Allah is their defender. That, that can, can be… That can be very powerful. That's why Allah then warned that, be careful of my awliya for if you ever come against them, I declare war on you. Well, Allah doesn't declare war on anyone, there's no category of Allah declaring war on anyone but Allah then gave this reference from Prophet Why? Because they, they relied so much on Allah that Allah is, is their wali will overtake their case and defend them. So why we have to, to, to lose our rank and lose a station by arguing and arguing and arguing and all the shaitan wants is for us to lose the barakah. Zikr nights, most prevalent. If you don't get it then you're really insane, literally insane. You have to be put away in a room and a key has to be locked. Because for how many years we're, we're teaching this, zikr nights are the tajalli nights. So you got now, and Mawlana Shaykh describes it that the, the zikr nights and the zikrs begin. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. There should be a million gold coins coming down on the whole shahr because Allah wanted everyone to be doing zikr. But since there's only one room with 50 people, well they got the lottery. The lottery is now split amongst 50 people instead of a million people getting the gold. The 50 people got the gold. Well shaitan's very angry with that. I'm not gonna let you go with that much barakah away from here. So his whole objective is to stop you from coming to the zikr, get you angry during the zikr and destroy you by the time you left the zikr. Where you're angry, gossiping, saying all sorts of things and, and you can l hear those gold coins going like this, the ring, the ring, the ring, they left your account. Right? But that's all shaitan wants, I want you come with nothing and I want you to leave with nothing. So when you understand that, why play shaitan's game on the zikr nights? So from Thursday we stay quiet, we know all the fitna what is going to come all the way to Saturday night, Salaamu Alaikum, good night, jump into bed, it's finished. By Sunday he leaves you alone.
but he wanted to destroy you on those nights to stop that reality. If somebody's not getting that after, you know, 10 years, 15 years, what's wrong with you? You keep playing with these shaitans until one time Allah says, it's enough. You, you play so much with them, make them your friends. They come and they rip and devastate people. Don't think, okay, it's okay. No, because we, ha we have all the other side of people who have horrific events from shaitan, horrific experiences from shayateen, horrific physical attacks from shayateen. They come in and they can do all sorts of horrific acts upon people. So to leave Allah's rahmah and to leave Allah's gift and to lose that bounty is just, it has to be insane. Literally that nobody should ever want to do like that. So it means then to cherish our way and to cherish what Allah has given to us and no, Thursday comes, here he goes. He's going to make your car not work, he's going to make every type of battle in the house so that you don't get your gold coins. And these coins are eternal. It's not like here where if you put gold in your wallet and tomorrow bitcoin drops and they stole your, your <laughs> bitcoins. These are eternal currency from Allah that you go throughout all of eternity dressed with these barakahs and these blessings inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How should we overcome the intense <clears throat> feeling of loneliness on this path? The heart is disassociated with daily life and only comes alive in tafakkur and zikr. The heart only comes alive in tafakkur and zikr, yes. <clears throat> Loneliness and solitude separate. That when we took a path to realities, we understood and most people should have understood the problem is in the crowd, means that when Sayyidina Yusuf his problem was his brothers. So for us it's our jama'ah, our friends where we hang out, who we know, who we knew. So the problem is the crowd. When Allah loves you, wants to save you, then like Sayyidina Yusuf that, I, I gotta take you away because these brothers are going to kill you. He inspired them, throw him in the well. Allah inspired them and these are Prophets of Allah These are the 11 tribes, 12 tribes of Bani Israel, each of them is a Prophet of Allah And the Prophets having hasad, wanting to kill their brother. So imagine then rest of us, everyone has hasad, everyone has, has bad desires, everyone wants to make a problem for us. One of Allah's miracles is that He isolates His servant whom is on a spiritual path. So when they feel themselves blessed, they look around and they say, they're very isolated. Why? Because Allah wants it that way. Said those people contaminate you and we gave these talks during those pandemic problems. Allah gave that to all His creation because He loves His creation. Stop what you're doing, go back into your home and then everybody had an awakening when they went home. Why? Because the real pandemic are people. The real virus, the most deadliest virus are people. People whom send their bad desires, their bad energy, their hasad, what you're supposed to do according to them and how you're supposed to live according to them and all of these battles that we have amongst people. Allah when He wants to save the servant to build them, they need a time to isolate. So the seed never grows amongst other seeds. The only time the seed grows and becomes rushed is if you put it in the ground and isolate it, cover it and begin to water it. Means that everybody needs solitude in which I block away from everybody and that the love I'm seeking and recognition I'm seeking, don't get it from people because they're gonna sell you one day. If, if your life is about getting recognized by people, family, loved ones, Every time they disappoint you, 
you become devastated because you thought that the people are supposed to love me, they're supposed to love me, I trusted him so much. Sayyidina Isa comes and says, why you trusted them? Their nature is to sell you, they will betray you. So why are you trusting? You trust only in Allah and as a result love Sayyidina Muhammad So then that was the big shift in their heart. When they were training they understood that their heart is to love Allah Ma fi qalbi dhikrullah nur Muhammadun sallallahu That their heart, their love for Allah and Allah put in their heart that love and approach Sayyidina Muhammad So means then our heart is for that, the time you have in your solitude is a blessing. Make your zikr, make your tafakkur, make your contemplation, make all the connections until Allah is satisfied with the servant that they've made their connections, they have the ability to make their connection. At that time they can put the love in the appropriate place. And they understand then at that time to love people for who they are and don't expect anything else from them. Because your, your real love is with Allah you're getting that satisfaction from Allah because you draw near to Allah But shaitan fooled people to come on this earth and find that Divinely love amongst people. It doesn't exist amongst you, it's not supposed to be amongst people, we're supposed to love Allah we have to rely on Allah When that true love is locked onto the Divine Presence then we say everything else is in jigar, right? Our expressions in Farsi, they're rare to say that, I love you with my qalb but I love you with my chest. Sine is not the same as qalb. Why? Because your love is here in my other organs. My love for Allah is only here. We can't put one, two, three, four in here, it's only Allah Everything else is somewhere else. So, jigarit baram, what? Is that my love for you in my liver? Why? Why they came with these expressions? Because they understood the true direction of love and the true connection. When the servant makes that connection and Allah loves them and they love Allah well then something else starts to happen. Is that Allah when He loves that servant everything in creation begins to love that servant. So there's a hikmah why Allah is repelling people, is that stay away until I'm working on him. And when Allah is working on him and begins to dress them, what happens? They're filled with Allah's love. Then what happens? They become magnetized by love, what we call magnetic character. They have juzbah. As a result of juzbah people are attracted to them, not because of them but because of the light and the love that flowing through their heart and through their soul. That's what we're trying to reach, not the love of people because people will always bring you down and you're putting that love in the wrong place. When we have the love for Allah then you begin to love everybody for who they are, what they are and don't expect anything from them. As a shaykh we know people never change, so why do you expect to change from people? So you become more patient with creation, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Despite being cautious, the eyes become corrupt by going to workplace and traveling in the roads. In the evening the soul becomes guilty and tired, how to clean the eyes? We have in the meditation book, you have to get the meditation book on how to do the washing, how to do the cleansing, how to wash your eyes, how to in the shower see ourselves washing the soul, washing all the bad images washing. The secret of wudu has an immense cleansing. It washes the sins from a body that died. Why you have to have the last ghusl? Because it's your last wudu before you go to Allah Allah, Allah put within the secret of water the ability to wash away sins and sayyat. So those whom understood they shower and they wash themselves physically and in the shower they have a meditation which they see their soul also moving in the water. And asking Allah that to take from my soul and take from my heart 
these images and this bad energy of people, hasad of people. So when you work around people, work in the mall, mall work a, as a nurse or doctor, anytime you're around people you try to go home and shower and wash away these negative energies that people put onto you intentionally or unintentionally. Because by the nature of energy it just moves towards a positive person. Every negative energy moves towards a positive people because positive attracts the negative. Mm. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Is the title servant of Allah greater than the title of Prophet in relation to the story of Khidr salam and Musa salam? The title of servant of Allah higher than the title of Prophet of Allah and <coughs> Prophet of Allah is, is immense rank. The Prophet of Allah is a servant of Allah Servanthood is something that Allah want to grant to creation but prophecy is not. So prophecy is a, is a is murad not murid, is something Allah granted that reality. So that's not something that can be achieved. Servanthood then is a station that can be achieved, that's why we described it. That Allah wants to grant the servants servanthood. But they have to be in the training of rijal. So nobody can become Abdullah without being Ubaidullah, right? Abdullah, how are you going to be Abdullah, servant of Allah if you didn't ever serve a servant of Allah So means first station is Ubaidullah, I am the servant of those whom served Allah Through that servanthood of of khidmat and service, I learned how these Abdullah perform. Not me, I'm just saying this is the way and the logic. If I never accompanied an Abdullah then I wouldn't understand hikmati bi salihin. I wouldn't understand how they talk, how they deal, how they interact, how they teach. So it was important in our lives to follow them. So we search for the servants of Allah and we ask not to be a high ranking but, Ya Rabbi grant me to be Ubaidullah, to serve them, serve their mission, accompany them, learn from them, study from them, to be under their hands, under their guidance so that I can understand and enroll in these courses of Rijalullah. The Rijal from those are plucked the Abdullahs because Abd is an immense station of Allah's ayn that they have vision, their heart is open and Allah dressed them to be an alim and that Allah gave them an alim, ancient knowledges. So that's an immense, immense station of reality but they have to be Rijalullah that their training in the schools of adab and manners and, and etiquette and good character. For how can you enter the heavenly kingdom if nobody taught you how and the protocols of that kingdom? So it means that everything has a protocol. You work in the garage is one type of job but if somebody says, do you want to come and they want to have you inside this palace serving the king? It's not the same. Garage you could do anything you want, yell, scream. Uh, do not shower but as soon as you come into the kingdom to serve the king there's an entire protocol that you do like this, don't do like that. You walk like this, you don't walk like that. If that's for dunya, what do you think from Allah's heavenly kingdom? And then to be presented to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad with bi adab, no manners, no nothing, no. The, no, there's no wali who will do that. So it means that that's why the school is based on manners that sit right, talk right, don't talk, have good manners, good character, control what you say, control what you feel, control what you're thinking within your heart. All these layers have to be controlled so that the servant can be raised up, inshaAllah, so that they can enter into those presences, inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, you spoke to me in my native language through the TV a few times. Ah. How does that work and will that happen again? Why would it not happen again? <laughs> the, the world of light and the, the world of isharat and, and telepathy is is a energy. We said that when you type there's an intention. It's a very powerful, I think physics now has scientists that are proving this. That you produce an energy when you have an intention, this energy comes and begins to provide a, a motor function for the intention to be fulfilled. Right? Because there's got to be a signal that, that came from your heart to your brain, your brain to your fingers and you began to type. That intention, Allah draws our attention is most powerful, kulu amalun bin niyat. That every amal, Allah is going to not look at the amal, He's going to go to the source of power, which what was your intention? We said many people may be praying but because the police are outside waiting for them so they're sitting in the masjid praying. But that's not the intention was to worship. So amals that have intention then Allah will govern the intention. But it draws us to there's an immense power. So when somebody is making an intention and writes an email, well already the energy of what they were trying to do went into that device, went through that electric channel and by the time you opened it regardless of what they wrote if you're sensitive to energy, you already felt the theme of what's now coming. They're saying something but the energy was something completely different. So it means then when we train ourselves with energy, train ourselves with energy, then you're making a connection and this concept of telepathy is an intention that the shaykh is teaching through an energy and you're picking up the vibration of energy and it comes to you as an energy and your consciousness is translating it into your language. Because the energy is, is one, the energy is singularity, there is, there's no Spanish energy and Arabic energy, it's just a qudra. When the qudra and the communication is going out through that signal, it's going out on a universal line. By the time it comes to your brain your brain will translate it in the language that's appropriate for you. But it came as a qudra and an energy. So telepathy is based on controlling of energy. So when they make the madad and train in how to making the madad, they're connecting with the energy of the shaykhs. And as a result of connecting is that first you're asking to be dressed by this energy, dressed by this energy as your, your clearance begins to rise and more and more trustworthy, your communication becomes two-way in that energy field. That the energy they send to you comes, your body begins to translate it in the process of how you think. If you think in Arabic it'll come to you as if he spoke Arabic, you think in Urdu he'll come to you speaking in Urdu. If you think in English based on how you think the inspiration will come, be translated by your, your faculty of your heart and brain and begin to translate it according to the language that you understand. So this is a, a reality in what people think of telepathy, it's the movement of energy. So the one whom Allah begin to dress in subtle energy fields, what they find now with scientists, they, they make an artificial device of energy and they put it on to flowers and plants. And they found that the plants are communicating, they're putting out a vibration and a sound. The tree has a sound, it's communicating. Yeah, so it means then if your energy is fine-tuned then what happens? You can go into the forest and if they need to they can meditate and contemplate and they begin to pick up the energy field of all of Allah's creation. What the tree is telling to them, what the plant is talking to them. And this was the traditional way of tippin nubuwa, 
prophetic medicine is that every herb and every flower would describe to the servant of Allah what its benefit is, what its healing is and what its purpose is. But as we relied more on technology and less on the heart, we stopped fine-tuning the heart. But this is a tremendous power, the one whom begins to train in energy, train in light, Allah opens His entire kingdom for them. And that kingdom has many, many realities based on uh, communication with animals, communication. How you think Sayyidina Sulaiman was communicating with the ants and birds and all the creatures? He wasn't speaking in a bird language to them, <laughs> It's the Prophet of Allah means merely he would communicate through his heart and he could hear all the communication channels and they come in on a digital channel, not wave channels anymore because you can have infinite amount of channels on a digital channel. Every creature can be heard and each one separate and not overlapping. So how he heard all of them and knew the hoop he was missing because it must have been tens of thousands of birds lined up, not one. He looked at the whole radif and the rose and said, where's that one? He's missing. And then he said, described before his armies are moving, thousands, he said, thousands and hundreds of thousands of soldiers Sayyidina Sulaiman had, immense, flying on carpets and immense creatures and he can hear the, angel, the ant talking to all the other ants and stop the entire army just to hear them. So Allah is saying, this is Qur'an, with what power Sayyidina Sulaiman had this is a qutra and energy and it's the energy that could hear and communicate back with the ants in which he got the isharat from the commander that go into your homes, the armies are moving. So Allah's great. When we say Allahu Akbar, we can't imagine what that Akbar is. We limit ourselves to a very limited life of physicality and it's a shame. That's the people on the prison interpreting shadows, you know. Their whole life is just looking at a wall and trying to interpret shadows and they really truly never lived. When Allah opened the heavenly kingdom and this world of light and energy, its immensity is something that cannot be understood nor can it be limited. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Najjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.